Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at one of my all-time favorite Google Workspace workflows and we're going to look at how we can build surveys, so maybe customer surveys, using Google Forms, pass that data through to Google Sheets for analysis and then pass it through to Google Slides for the presentation. And it's very easy to set up. And once you have it set up, it's completely seamless. It's remarkable. And the data, new responses will flow right through that pipeline and all the way through to that final step. And it's just a much better workflow than having to manually update charts and then cut and paste those charts into your reports and things. So let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in our Google Drive. Let's go and create a new Google Form. So click Google Forms, opens a new form. We'll give it a name, Google Sheets Survey Form, which pops down here. Then we'll add a description. I think it's always nice just to actually set up the form properly with some information, make it as pleasant as possible for people to, to take. Uh, so thank them here, fill out any information you need to in the description. Let's ask some questions. So to save me typing these out, I will make this a little quicker. So what, how would you describe your familiarity with Google Sheets? And we're going to do a linear scale from one to five. And we'll say one is the beginner and number five is the pro. Now that's okay, but we might want to give a little bit more context to help people decide where they fall on that spectrum. And what we can do with this particular one is down here, I can say, show the description. And then in the description, I can give some more information about the levels. So just so the question itself is not too cluttered, I can put it up here in the description. So when we go and look at preview this, then it just looks a little nicer here than having too many things clutching up the actual question down here. So that's looking pretty good. We'll add one more question. So we'll do another question. So we'll say, how often do you use AI at work? Daily, weekly, rarely, or never. And let's make them both required questions. That means that people have to complete these questions before they can submit the form. Great. And then the other thing I like to do is let's just make this our own form. Let's match our branding. Let's just add some little few extra touches to make this something special that people then associate with our brand. So another theme here, let's choose an image. Go to upload, browse, and I'll click my logo that I have for the form. We'll say done. So that goes and puts that up at the top. And it actually goes and grabs some colors that are pretty close to the ones for my brand. But what I'll do is actually grab, actually type in the actual proper color, 09, 09F9E59, and add that. And there we go. So now when I look at this, it just looks a lot more professional. It's a lot more like on brand for me. So let's just go and submit it. So let's say we're pretty advanced with Google Sheets. I'm use AI Weekly, so we'll submit. Great, submit one more since we're here. And we'll say I'm sort of getting started and I never use AI. So we'll go back to here now and we have two responses. And you can look at your responses here in the back end of forms, that's fine, but it really is very limited because it just gives you this one particular chart. It doesn't let you do anything with it. And then this one particular chart here, and they may not be to your liking, especially as your survey questions get more complex, you may need to do extra analysis. So I do recommend that we, we click this button, link to sheets, create the new spreadsheet, say create, it will create it for us, open it for us, it'll be in the same folder as the form. Let's zoom in here now. And here we actually have our data then that we can work with in sheets. So it's just those two entries so far. So let me go ahead and submit a whole bunch more. Okay, so I've submitted a whole bunch more forms now, and we have 15 entries in our spreadsheet. So back in the actual survey itself, you can see the 15 responses, and you can see these charts are quite nice. It's 
such a simple question and answer that this might suffice. But we're going to continue with this workflow to see what the workflow looks like. But you can see now that we've got some actual real data in the back here. So we want to have it in sheets so that we can actually do our own analysis. So here's our data. One thing I like to do is just set up my headers so that they're a little easy to read. So we'll just send them, wrap them, make them bold, and then it's easy to read them across the top here. Okay, so we'll go here, we'll say insert, and we'll say pivot table, new sheet, that's fine. And now what I'm gonna do is actually on this data range here, I'm going to take off that 16 and just say A1 to C. And the reason I do that is because then as new data gets added down here, it will show up automatically in my pivot table. I can either click add here, click it, or I can just drag it from the side over here. How would I describe my familiarity? Drag that in, and then the timestamp can be dragged down into values. And it summarizes it by count initially, and that's fine, it does a count, because we just want a count of how many entries are for each of these levels. So there we go. And now we'll create a chart. Let's do that next, since we're here. Insert chart. Don't really like the pie chart for this particular one. So we'll change to the column charts, and then we will. Let's change the heading back to just how would you describe your familiarity with Google Sheets? We don't really need the full timestamp in there as well. We can also get rid of this count. We don't need to necessarily have that there. If I come into series here, I will add data labels as well. So it just puts that data label on the inside. We'll say position auto, that's fine. The size, let's make them slightly bigger. Let's say 16, that's quite nice. So we might say one equals beginner, five equals pro. Just to add that in down here so that people know what we're talking about. Okay, well that will do for now for this one. What we'll do is we'll create the second pivot table. And here's a little trick for you is to highlight this top left corner of your existing pivot table. Click Command C if you're on a Mac or Control C on a PC or a Chromebook to copy that top left cell. That's like your active anchor cell of your pivot table. We can come down beneath here and paste that. So Command V or Control V or right click paste. And it pastes an actual live pivot table that we can start editing. So that just saves us a bunch of time. So that's a little trick for you there. So we'll, we'll click edit on this next one. We'll remove the rows that we have and we'll drag in this other option for rows. How often do you use AI at work? That's the other one we want to do the chart of. Now, up here, these were in ascending order like we want because they're numbers. So the, they can be ordered in ascending order very easily. Down here, these are ordered in alphabetical order. So not really the order we want. So what we'll do is we'll just sort that out first ourselves. So let's just copy them over here. And then using your mouse, you can drag these around just by clicking and holding them or simply just typing out the list so it's in the order you want. So that's the order we want. Now we just need to grab the values. So we'll do this with a quick X lookup. Search for this. We'll search in, we'll use the whole block actually just to be sure. F4 to lock it. This one here, F4 to lock it is the results return. And then I'll just copy that down and there we go. Insert the chart. And maybe this time we'll go back to the pivot table because it works for this one because of the four elements. It can be read clearly and easily. And we'll copy this title and we'll customize and we'll add chart and axis titles, chart title, and there we go. Okay, and that's a nice that's a nice chart for us. How often do you use AI at work? It tells us percentages. So roughly it splits quarter, 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 but slightly fewer on the weekly, but fairly evenly matched across those four. Now the nice thing is, is let's go and submit the form again. And let's add in one here, a beginner. So this is gonna jump from one to two. We're gonna add a beginner and somebody who never uses AI as well. So we should expect the never to go up by one 
and this to go by one if we set the pivot tables up correctly to incorporate new results. So we'll say one and we said never and let's submit. And now it should flow through to here. And there we go, look at that two here straight away. It jumped from one up to two. And down here, the never proportion now has gone to 31%. So almost a third of people not using AI daily. Great, so we've got the two pivot tables set up, the two charts set up. All the data now flows through here automatically. And the key thing, remember with this, is on the responses here is to make sure that this C, the end row range, you can do it by just chopping the range off and it will just basically expand to the bottom of your sheet. But just chop it off yourself, click OK, and that gives you plenty of room. It goes down to the bottom of your spreadsheet, essentially. So that gives me all of these extra rows to play with. So if I anticipated even more data than that, I might add 1,000 more rows, click that, come back to my pivot table, click here, delete this off again, just to say A1 to C. So let's start from A1, across the column C, and just go as far as you can down. We'll click OK. And now when I open it up again, you see it goes to now to 1,117. So it's expanded right to the bottom of my actual spreadsheet. All the way down here. So if you need more than that, even if you're anticipating more, just add more in there. Because then that pivot table is always accepting those new responses. And by the way, that's what this row is representing. These are all the blank rows. And because there's no timestamps, which is what we're counting, the blank rows and they have no, no timestamps, which is we're just counting these timestamps. That's why it's a zero. So that's just all, that's what that means. Great, so we're all set up now. The final piece of the puzzle is to open up my survey results. So this is the presentation I'm gonna to give to my fellow colleagues or my clients or my stakeholders uh, on what the sheet skill level is of my customers. So we'll go and grab this chart, we'll click Command C or Control C to copy it into here, Command V or Control V, and then we will say paste the chart, but link it to the spreadsheet. So say paste. There we go, we'll do that one there. Great, so that's now in there. We'll add the other chart as well. So we'll go down and grab this chart. So again, Command C or Control C to copy it into here, Command V or Control V to paste it, and then make sure you click link to spreadsheet. If you paste it unlinked, essentially it cuts off that connection from the chart back to the spreadsheet and then you, and new data then won't propagate through to the chart. So we want to make sure it's linked, it stays linked. So we'll say it stays linked, center that one. And there we go, we have this very nice presentation now. And let's go back and submit another survey form. So we'll submit another response. And let's say this time we'll add one, somebody who's an expert. So that five, we should see jump from one to two. And then we'll also submit somebody daily. So we should see that 25% increase on the daily. So somebody who's a pro and they use AI daily. Let's submit. And we'll go back to check our slides and it's still one. So what's going on? Well, you'll notice this little option here and it's telling us to update. So let's check this one as well. There we go, a linked chart with the update. Now we have multiple linked objects. We might have linked tables as well, or even more charts than this. What we can do is come up to tools, linked objects, and then we can just keep refreshing this list to make sure they're all here. Any of the ones that need updating, we can update them all in one go with this update all. So we'll click update all, close this, and there we go. You saw it jump from one up to two for the pro, and the daily now has gone up to 29%, so 30% for the never and the dailies. And there we go. So now instead of having to come here and copy this chart every time and copy new versions in here. So delete this one and copy new ones in. We don't have to do that because of this linked chart. So this is the workflow I really love because it starts here in a Google form. The data flows through into the sheet. We can do all the complex analysis we like. And then the final results, those final 
charts or linked or tables can be linked so that when they're here, they pull data all the way through from here, all the way through very seamlessly. Great, so that is one of my favorite workflows in Google Workspace. Super easy to set up and really seamless once it's working. So I hope that video has been useful. I hope you enjoyed that. And let me know in the comments how you use this technique, what else you, other questions you have about this technique. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel to help me grow it so I can make more of these videos for you. And I'll see you again soon in another video. Thanks folks, thanks for watching, bye bye now.